space is a vast frontier, constantly providing us with new things to be discovered. When it comes to megastructures, a lot of experts have questions, and so should you. Ranging from what are these things to what we don't know and more, it's time to do some out of this world learning. So when it comes to hunting for aliens, most folks automatically jump to thinking radio signals are the be all end all. But there's an attractive alternative, searching for physical artifacts. Yes, alien structures. Now, we're not just talking about crop circles or other weird phenomena here on Earth. We're talking about massive engineering works that an advanced society has constructed somewhere in space. So why search for these artifacts? Because it eliminates the requirements that aliens have chosen to get in touch, to transmit radio signals our way. Sure, maybe they want to do that, but then again, maybe they just want to lay low. If you're not sure you're the Milky Way's top dog society, you don't want to bet the farm by assuming that the alpha aliens, wherever they might be, have good intentions. Silence could have survival value. There's another point. Picking up an alien civilization's transmissions requires that the signal reach your telescope at the very moment that you're pointing it in their direction. So this is SETI's well-known synchronicity problem, and it's been likened to firing a missile and expecting that it will intercept head-on another one fired by somebody else, which is kind of improbable. Earlier this year, astronomers combed through more than 5 million stars from the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, Gaia, and two mass sky surveys, searching for stars that seem to have excess infrared radiation. And according to these researchers, this extra infrared signal could be interpreted as the signature of a Dyson sphere. Well, what do you know? At least seven stars in the Milky Way showed signs of potentially harboring a hypothetical, super advanced form of alien technology known as a sphere. Now, while the researchers can't be totally sure that these stars host intelligent civilizations, they're definitely going to pique the interest of scientists searching for the crazy life in the cosmos. So what do we know? Well, theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson first proposed all the ideas of Dyson spheres back in 1960. And the general idea is that technologically superior alien civilizations might build gigantic structures surrounding their home stars, or around black holes, in order to harness the object's gargantuan energy output and further advance their civilizations. So alien civilizations could use these spheres to acquire millions of times more solar energy than we have access to here on Earth, while also giving themselves a spiffy new structure to live on. But no energy collection or usage system is perfect. So while this sphere collects radiation from the star on its inside, Side, it also emits heat from its outside. To us, that would make a Dyson sphere appear as a star with a lot more infrared radiation than normal. The most extreme version of these megastructures would be an enormous sphere that encapsulates an entire star, and lesser versions can include ring stations and swarms of gigantic mirrors. Now, while scientists argue over the likelihood of a civilization ever becoming advanced enough to construct such behemoth structures, a lot of researchers think that, like, if these spheres do exist, we should be able to spot them. Because, in theory, if a Dyson sphere did surround an alien star, the heat from that star would cause the sphere to heat up and emit a lot, and I mean a lot of infrared radiation. And hey, scientists, or at least the ones who like to theorize about this, have long said that these advanced alien civilizations would be marked by their ability to harness the energy from the sun, rather than scrabbling over its planet's resources, like us puny earthlings. Dyson himself died in 2020 before any of his spheres could be found, although they're just actually one of a dozen ideas that bear his name. Now, Junior, George Dyson, also attested to his father's fascination and comprehensive reach across disciplines. Taking advantage of a short attention span and an aversion to bureaucracy, he contributed to five fields of mathematics and 11 fields of physics, as well as to theoretical biology, engineering, operations research, literature, and public affairs. This is what the younger said in an interview. Many of his ideas were controversial, but his guiding principle was that it is better to be wrong than to be vague. So. How do we spot one? Well, as a result, Dyson Sphere hunters look for spikes in these wavelengths, known as infrared excess emissions, or IEEs, among the spectra of distant stars. These are one of the key techno signatures that alien hunting astronomers look for, alongside the weird radio signals, because obvi, atmospheric greenhouse gases, and artificial light. Astronomers on the prowl for these alien megastructures typically rely on two key methods, looking for dips in a star's brightness as the structure passes by, and searching for that excess of infrared light, which is probably radiating from the structure itself. Yes, you gotta mention that infrared light can also come from dusty leftovers from star formations or even super smashing collisions between space rocks, which makes things kinda tricky, especially when you consider that most stars expected to have these disks are the younger ones. That's why two new studies found something kind of interesting. They spotted stars with excess infrared light, and they were older than you expected. So Project Hephaestos, an international endeavor involving scientists from Sweden, India, the US, and the UK, took a massive leap forward in this quest, after meticulously sifting through 
data from the European Space Agency's Gaia Star Map, the Two Mass Infrared Survey, and NASA's Wise Space Telescope. Scientists have surveyed 5 million distant solar systems using neural network algorithms. We did mention it a bit earlier, but just it's so groundbreaking that you gotta mention it twice. In a new study published May 6th in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, researchers used a computer program to look for IEEs. So, like I just mentioned, they used a lot of different things Gaia, WISE, and also TUMAS, which is short for Two Micron All Sky Survey. So, remarkably, this program identified all of these candidates for sphere bound stars. Now, all those seven stars highlighted by the study are M dwarf stars, which is a class of main sequence stars that are smaller and dimmer than the Sun, and they're all located within a thousand light years of Earth. Now, this is not the only recent study to identify potential IEEs. A near identical study, which was uploaded March 27th to the preprint server ArcZiv, also analyzed around 5 million stars surveyed by Gaia, Wise, and Tumas, and found 53 potential candidates. However, it's unclear if both studies analyzed that same data set. The March paper hasn't been peer reviewed, but in both studies, researchers accounted for factors that could produce false positive results, such as nebulas surrounding stars. However, it is impossible to fully rule out other explanations, such as extreme debris disks, large clouds of rock and dust left behind by collisions, and a lot more. All these things that get like really super heated by home stars. Researchers say the next step will be to carry out follow up observations on the newly identified candidate stars using more powerful instruments, such as, oh, I don't know, the James Webb Space Telescope, to take more accurate readings and search for other signs of intelligent extraterrestrial life in these systems. And we had to end today with the Tabby Star, which is the crazy discovery out in the world that shocked folks back in 2014. It was one fall afternoon, the trees were changing from green to gold, and Tabitha Boyajian visited the astronomy department at Pennsylvania State University to share an unusual discovery. So then a postdoctoral scholar, Tabitha had flagged inexplicable fluctuations of light from a star monitored by the NASA planet hunting Kepler Space Telescope. These fluctuations looked nothing like those caused between a planet passing between the star and the telescope. She'd already ruled out other culprits, so like glitches, anything, and she was like, I need ideas. And we have some quotes from some of the researchers there. They were like, it was kind of unbelievable that it was real data. We were scratching our heads. For any idea that came up, there was always something that would argue against it. Now, this was star KIC 8462852, and it had a very unusual flickering habit. Tabitha wrote up a paper on possible explanations for the star's bizarre behavior, and these were published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. But she also sent her data to fellow astronomer Jason Wright, a researcher who helped develop a protocol for seeking signs of unearthly civilization. And she's like, what do you think? Well, to him, it looked like the kind of star he and his colleagues had been waiting for. If none of the ordinary reasons for the star's flux quite seemed to fit, perhaps an extraordinary one was in order. One new brain suggested something very unorthodox. Perhaps these fluctuations were caused by alien tech. Now, this star, now known as Tabby Star, has captivated a lot of folks. As with all great enigmas, it has generated a seemingly infinite number of possible solutions, none of which wholly explain the curious observations. Whatever is responsible may lie outside the realm of known astronomical phenomena. Experts said, like, when Tabitha showed us the data, they were fascinated by how crazy it looked. Aliens should always be the very last hypothesis you consider, but this looked like something you would expect an alien civilization to build. And this star held more surprises. Another astronomer, Bradley Schaefer of Louisiana State University, said that based on archival data, this star had dimmed by more than 15% over the past century. And this claim was controversial, because such dimming seems next to impossible. Stars stay at nearly the same brightness for billions of years after they are born, and only undergo rapid changes just before they die. The irregular dips and long-term dimming of this star are normally seen around very young stars with still forming planets. So these experts went through a lot of natural explanations and they're like, yeah, this might be an alien megastructure, which kind of similar to what Dyson described more than half a century ago. And this was after ruling out black holes, uh, this thing being a disk of dust and gas, swarm of comets, cloud in the solar system, etc., so forth and so on. And that's it for me once again, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident Yuki spooky girly. See y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.